Good evening, everyone. Last night, so here we go again. Um, apologies for lateness from Councillor Martin Welton, so he delayed back the work. Um, any declarations of interest? Thank you. We have a meeting on the 15th of July. The minutes of that meeting agreed. Thank you. Item 4, the consultation on the draft South London Waste Plan. What we'll do, we'll wait for Martin, we'll take that one. He is here. So we're on item 5, preparing the Council for the United Kingdom's exit from the EU. Councillor Allison. Um, thank you, Leader. Um, we um, spoke about this at some, at some length and presented it to, um, to Council um, last, um, last night. Um, I should um, begin by what I, wasn't, what I didn't feel really have time for um, uh, yesterday, which is to um, thank the, um, the very many um, officers and staff um, of the, um, the Council um, who are doing so much to um, mitigate the potential um, difficulties um, that the borough um, and our residents could face as a result um, of um, Brexit. Um, obviously, initially, the, um, the concern has been about um, making sure that um, the implementation of Brexit as a deal um, is um, uh, you know, that we ensure that, uh, that our residents aren't impacted as much as they, um, they could be. Um, as I said um, last night, I think it's still our view that there will be um, an impact um, on residents here. There could be an impact on um, businesses. Um, there could be an impact on many of our um, residents, particularly those who are from the, um, the European Union or um, who, whose loved ones are from the, um, the European Union. Um, and that they will have an impact even if there is a deal. Um, but I think last night, and um, under this paper, I a little bit more about um, the uh, potential um, consequences of their uh, Britain moving um, in a um, sort of edge kind of manner um, on October the 1st, um, the first of the two hours to do um, And that's obviously a, a great um, concern um, for us. Um, so, so I'd like to. Um, thank everybody involved um, in this. So one of the first things we did um, in, uh, as an administration was um, establish a, um, a named officer responsible for, um, for Brexit, and um, Caroline Holland um, has taken that. So I've um, taken the uh, responsibility as the, uh, the cabinet member um, responsible for the council's response to Brexit, and necessarily responsible for Brexit. <laughs> um, and um, so we've taken a number of, um, of, of actions to um, work with other um, councils and authorities to, um, to build up um, resilience here. Um, we're, for instance, funding a, um, a post of the um, of Merton's Assistance Advice Bureau, um, which means that we're able to provide um, good and tailored um, advice from a trusted source um, to people um, as they um, need it. I think one of the concerns we mentioned um, last night, um, particularly for um, residents from a, um, an EU background, is the difficulties that many of them are having in um, attaining um, settled status. Clearly, um, the role of um, systems advice is helping uh, many people with their, um, their applications. But it is quite a struggle. Um, you have to prove um, that you have been a resident and working in the, in, in the country for five years. And for some people, um, I mean, for many of us, I imagine, um, being able to um, to demonstrate um, like that you had been entirely 100% of your time living and working in this um, country over a five-year period would be quite um, tricky. Ticket you don't own a house, you're not the bill payer on a house, you're sharing with, um, with somebody, you have a baby, or go, all those sorts of things. Um, it makes life very difficult. And so um, you know, we are finding in the country that, um, that more than a quarter um, of, um, of the EU citizens who apply for um, social status, and those are the ones who have applied, are still not getting it. And that is a, um, a massive, massive worry for them. And it's a massive worry for us um, because obviously they're our friends and neighbours. Um, so that's the difficulties that we're facing now. With the No Deal, we've seen from the, um, the um, the Operation um, Yellowhammer papers that um, have been um, released um, against the government's wishes in the last few weeks. Um, Parliament has forced the government 
um, to um, to publish them. Um, we should um, thank our former members um, of, of, the, of the council, um, in particular um, Siobhan McDonough and um, and Stephen Hammond, um, for voting um, to um, publish those because it means that we now know um, that there there are risks that um, fresh food will not be available um, in, um, in local shops. And there is a risk as well that um, medicines won't get through people who um, just don't need to be used their life. Um, there's been, um, uh, been talk of, um, of a great deal of consequences for the NHS as a result of an overdose of Brexit. So we need to, um, to really um, watch out for that. So I think it's no surprise um, that we've been <coughs> in Merton using a lot of our um, experience in emergency planning um, to um, prepare for um, Brexit. This is an emergency, I'm sure, um, and we should um, treat it as that. And um, as we said last night, um, and it wasn't um, just the administration, the um, Liberal Democrats um, also talked about it, um, the threat of no deal is something that we feel very strongly that our um, representatives should stand up against and um, we would um, like them to, um, to do that. Anyway, I've, I've probably gone on um, a little bit too long and covered a lot of the, um, the ground that I, um, that I did last night, which I'm sure that everybody was informed by then and probably not, not, not even less so now. Um, but um, if, there's any, um, if there's any further questions that people have about the actual work that the council is doing, so this is a forum in which it's easier to do that um, than it is in the, uh, the more sort of like confrontational style of a, um, of a full council meeting. I'm happy to, uh, to help out. Thank you. Uh, just for Councillor Walton's benefit, we'll be taking your item uh, later, item four, consultation of draft South London Waste Plan after this item on Brexit. We now return to the lead officer on Brexit for the London Borough of Merton, Caroline Holland. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I suppose I just want to say there was a, a Brexit meeting on, on Monday um, for London representatives um, and some chief execs were there as well. So it was just sort of giving a sense of preparing for a, a no deal for the end of October, what the work mean for us, what some of the risks are, and how we're working to mitigate those as much as we can. And those are some of the, the known risks. There are still clearly some unknown unknowns. Um, and therefore, sort of, we are quite clear that with this paper, um, it won't include everything because there may be things that we don't necessarily think of. Or as someone said, it's what you call a thread, it's like five places removed from where you thought it was coming from. So some of the unintended consequences, we're not fully aware of at this stage, and we need to do some more work on that. And of the applications for second status, so we were estimating to around 8,400 for our but we don't know whether they're successful or unsuccessful. So we're still pushing out them to give us more information as to how um, we can then help those who haven't yet applied. Because we want to make sure that certainly the vulnerable, both in Hannah's services and for those who we have a core prepare responsibility for, that we are actually making sure that we are doing as much as we can to ensure those people get the second status that they, um, they sort of deserve. Um, there's still a lot of talk as to whether we will be able to leave without a deal. There's clearly lots of work going on in, in Durham at the moment, some conversations around the mm -hmm. um, evidence of the deal that uh, Boris Johnson needs um, this month, so slightly many time scales, and whether there would be a successful challenge to the event mm -hmm. which went through saying that we do need a deal before we can leave. Um, there's also, I think, quite a lot of the work has been driven through NHCLG and getting some understanding there, but the Department of Health and Social Care has sort of been coming to the table more recently working with them with adult um, social care directors to see how we can play into what needs to be done and making sure that we can prepare as much as we can um, or then dealing with the consequences. Mm -hmm. And so certainly we're looking at the short, medium and long term of some of these things because some of it will be policy related and it's how we can have either where there's no GDPR agreements, what they might mean for some of our contracts, um, some of our suppliers, if they're not UK based, what boost that brings to us. So we're also working through those as well. We're happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your work on this so far. Any cabinet contributions? Councillor Ken Broad, and then Councillor McCauley, and then Councillor Carol Kukumabe, and then Councillor Toby Byers. Yes, Ken. 
Um, so I have time for two questions. One um, probably for Caravan and then one for Rachel. Um, firstly, I know that we have funded the post uh, at the Mercy Citizens Bureau. Do we know how many referrals that they might have received uh, related to Brexit? And do we have that kind of data? Does it split down on that level? Um, and then for Rachel, I know that in the uh, report we talk about the action plan for looked after children uh, for whom we are corporate parents. Um, do you, it's uh, mentioned as being, being developed uh, in conjunction with the Home Office, but do we have an update on that that we can perhaps share today? So certainly, I think the person's only been in post since the end of July, um, and that is part of the information we will be getting from the type of groups that are coming forward, both from staff and for sort of residents of the borough, because we're also very clear if there are more cases than they can handle, we may look to sort of extend that as well. And so we will have that information to feed through at that to this stage. Um, so, what, so I can't give you an update of numbers of children and their current status uh, at the moment, although I can speak this answer for you. What I can tell you is that there are two elements to this work and so the status for looked after children, and it depends on whether we have parental responsibility for them or not. So for the children who have parental responsibility, we pursue a status for them. Uh, for those who are accommodated under Section 20, their parents still have parental responsibility, so our role in that situation is to support them to make applications for settled status. Uh, we can't insist. Um, so that's the work that's underway. Thank you very much. That's interesting to note. So, mm -hmm. where we are, the corporate parents will undertake the second state's application for. Where, where we have to go. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Edith McCauley. I think I have a small comment because um, Stephen Martin is continuing to um, monitor the community as a whole in terms of, you know, anxiety amongst people because I noticed I have been speaking to a lot of other problems and also we have seen a lot of increase in court procedures where um, people have committed offence in terms in terms of this basic issue. So a lot of people London laws are monitoring the situation amongst the communities so I'm delighted to see that we are working with the police in terms of the safety of our community. Thank you very much. That's very reassuring that London Boroughs are working on this. Yeah. Yes, the Caroline Cooper Marbet. Thank you very much, Chair. And it's for Caroline. <clears throat> uh, well, in terms of um, no deal, we talk about emergency planning. I was just wondering where, where are we compared to other boroughs? And also, what, what are some of the things that we are planning for? Thank you. I suppose it's very difficult to judge where we are in relation to other boroughs because this is something that is only just building steam again, as it were. So I think after March it's sort of died down, but certainly with the pressure that um, the monitoring now that we're doing back to MHCRG, so we'll be able to see a London picture and the information um, on that back to see how we compare with others. But certainly I think there's some, some of the things we're doing, so it's around checking with our major contractors, their arrangements in place for our staff, um, and that's the proportion of staff who may be on an EU basis mm -hmm. to then see if there's a risk to that. Checking with our major contractors around, say for our school meals, how, where do their meals and food come from? Is it going to be impacted as uh, we get heading into winter? Not quite at the moment with the weather outside, mm -hmm. um, but then more, more what food is imported and they've got what impact that's having on that. Um, making sure that people, staff are reviewing the business continuity plans if there are issues, for example, within schools, not necessarily within the borough, so some schools could close and therefore if um, staff need to look after their children and then will come away from our services, how are we managing that? So, so as I said, once you sort of start to pull a thread, yes. you know, all sorts of things well, could come into play, yeah. but may not. So that's the other thing to bear in mind, yeah. it's got to still be a proportionate response at this stage. Thank you. Councillor Byers. Thank you, Chair. Just a <coughs> comment and a question. Um, obviously, adult social care um, is particularly at risk given the reliance of um, EU nationals in the workforce, and I think it's right to note um, at 4.46 that we've taken a very proactive approach um, and I think have done more than um, other borrowers to proactively visit and engage with our domiciliary and caring providers. I think we should thank the director and her team for that. 
Um, but I know she's very involved in some of the wider ADAS planning, and I wonder if she could just comment more generally on how to she thinks maybe we are in the sector, is particularly with winter coming, despite the autumnal sunshine we're experiencing. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so I, I said are we ready in, in, in the context of the work that we are doing across London? Because, of course, adult social care in Macton also spreads out into other bodies in London because we place people in different bodies and different bodies place in Macton. So if I can just give some of the key headlines. Some of our challenges in adult social care, irrespective of Brexit, has been the workforce and the market. Um, we've now ramped this up across London and some of the approaches we've taken, we've, we've just launched a survey um, for all of the London boroughs in relation to adult social care, so we get an overall picture for London. Um, each borough is feeding into their borough plans and their Brexit leads, and that work feeds into NHCLG. We're now sharing that information um, with the Department of Health and Social Care as well. Um, the trend across London and what's starting to come through the survey is very much two key areas, the workforce um, and the market. So, um, we're, uh, I'm the ADAS resilient lead and Brec I'm now the Brexit lead as well. Um, so part of our work going forward is we're going to develop a scenario type playbook for London boroughs in terms of adult social care. So we create some scenarios um, and give some advice on how to respond to that. Key is to what we've done here in Repton is engaging early with our care home providers um, and getting an understanding of where their challenges are and where their concerns are. That may have a financial impact for us in terms of um, uplifts and in terms of salaries and care homes and we'll monitor that quite closely but we do need to get a London um, feel for that. Um, we're also working incredibly closely with the NHS. We are hit, hitting winter so we've got, we're have got we now sharing data across the NHS and across London boroughs in terms of not just hospital beds but care home placements as well. Um, and we have um, made a very clear ask um, through our leadership role for London to DHSC in relation to specifically a couple of things. One, we know that doctors and nurses um, and occupational therapists are on the top list for roles in London, but um, unqualified professional roles aren't, and we need to get them on that list because we can make their applications a lot more easier, so we're really pushing for that. Um, we've asked for some confirmation around the EU settlement um, status and we've also asked around trying to get a reduction on 30,000 um, top cap um, in salary because we know that the majority of professional care workers earn less than 30,000. So that's kind of our London approach and London and London view at the moment. And then we continue to bring that down into, into Martin as well. Thank you very much. Caroline, you wanted to come in. So I suppose it was just to say that sort of cut in the run up to winter and I think after the flu season in Australia where there's been a particularly prevalent um, strain of flu, um, we have had confirmation that they feel that public health will be sufficient flu traps, mm -hmm. certainly um, for them. So that I think is encouraging news, but it's still they're making sure people take them up. So mm -hmm. that just that's not one of the uh, medicines at risk at this stage. Um, thank you. Um, I'd just like to also refer to the part um, relating to um, regeneration um, and specific reference uh, to 4.70 new pact um, on Brexit on our existing regeneration and building schemes. Um, obviously, one of the concerns at the moment is uh, shortage of labour, uh, especially if we have a no deal Brexit um, when. Um, new immigration controls will immediately go into effect and there will be no um, transitional period, but also as well the potential um, uplift um, in terms of uh, construction costs um, for um, developments. Um, would um, the Director like, care to comment um, on that matter? Because clearly it is a concern that um, in the event of an ideal Brexit, we obviously see fewer regeneration schemes happening in the borough, um, but also as well in terms of investment in the market and also as well the current impact the uncertainty is having at the moment in terms of regeneration. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a real concern uh, and it's one that we'll need to keep a very close eye on. And the timing of some of our regeneration schemes at the moment is helpful. We anticipated uh, Brexit during this calendar year uh, and <coughs> the regeneration of more than town centres is expected to go to the market in the early part of next year. Brexit is delayed, we have a no deal Brexit. 
uh, and that could affect the market and affect the prices and the interest in that regeneration scheme. Uh, and the same could also be said for Moranto, but on a smaller scale. And our own housing companies' construction costs may be affected by Brexit, uh, and we need to consider the timing of those sites if uh, no deal Brexit happens, uh, and the impact that it might have on the private rental market, but also on uh, the construction costs. So those two particular areas are being kept under a close review. Uh, and we need to look at the impact on other larger schemes which are outside of our control, uh, such as Crossroad 2 uh, and all that happen, as well as other infrastructure projects across the world. Thank you. And Chet, um, have we, uh, with regard to our staff, have we um, spoken to them, consulted with them, and is that Citizen Advice Bureau a service available to them, even though they work here but may not live here? Uh, yes, we have. So our, our HR department provides uh, advice and support to any of our staff who, who would be in the pool that need to um, consider their status and make applications. Uh, and we, we use the staff survey to identify uh, uh, the staff who are in that classroom and information to uh, There's one other item that I was going to share the route about. I'm denied about it because it's a problem that I can't see a solution to, but I think some people are aware of this, which is um, the, sorry, um, our, uh, our emergency planning functions uh, work on the assumption that London provides mutual aid to each other. Um, over the last 10 years, we've reduced the number of staff that we've got in emergency planning and in local authorities generally, so the spare capacity to react to issues is quite constrained in any individual authority, but we can help each other. So when Kingston had the unexploded bomb recently, they asked me to assist that sort of had their fire, we'll be able to help them with that in that sense by sending our staff to assist as well. So what that assumes is that an emergency occurs in a discrete area at a single point in time and then we can all run around to help. Uh, the danger here is that it might happen everywhere at the same time. Uh, and if that's the case, then our resources are not going to be sufficient to, to react to that. Uh, and there isn't time between now and the 31st of October to suddenly Require a significant number of additional staff. So, if the worst does happen, it's likely not to be localised so that we can provide support. It's going to be everywhere. And I'm not entirely sure why it's important to be aware of that. And I assume that we're here not just for local authorities but for our partners as well. Uh, 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 some and some. Um, uh, the NHS uh, has had a specific specific emergency planning function for quite a while and is reasonably well resourced. Um, uh, our police colleagues, as we were debating last night, have had reductions. More is now coming available to them, so they're more in the same place as we are. Thank you, everyone. Um, as we all know, we're a Remain borough, and uh, this is a, a, an area of great concern uh, for us as a council, but for residents as well, who wish to remain in the EU. Can I say how impressed I am and um, by the uh, contributions of our directors? Thank you very much for your uh, interest, professionalism, integrity, and uh, care for this very, very important subject. I also welcome the contributions from cabinet members and uh, our uh, um, negotiations and discussions with our staff as well. I think it really, be, really is good that uh, that Citizen Advice Bureau service is open to our staff as well, uh, who may want to um, apply for more separate status. Added to yesterday's debate on uh, this report, I think we are doing all we can uh, to prepare for obviously what we want uh, politically uh, as a cabinet uh, uh, is to remain in the EU, um, but the reality is that directors and uh, organisations such as local authorities must prepare for what may happen, not for what we love to happen. So thank you very much uh, for your care and attention to this uh, item. I know that we are um, communicating with our residents through that very popular uh, uh, magazine, My Merton, that goes to all 86,000 households and has had various features on this as a a full page spread as well as various uh, um, uh, in, um, uh, contributions over the last year on, um, on this issue. 
So we come to our recommendation, that's recommendation A. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you all very much. We now move back to item four, consultation on the draft South London Waste Plan. Councillor Martin Welt. Uh, thank you, Chair. And you probably wonder why um, this is coming to myself, um, this waste plan, as a lead member. Well, it relates to a planning document, which is a key planning document, uh, because the South London Waste Plan is one of um, the documents which will contribute um, towards uh, the local development scheme, um, which was passed um, at Council last night um, in terms of the supporting documents that are required. Uh, this is the second uh, South London Waste Plan. Um, the first was adopted in 2012 and runs till 2021. Um, I'd also like to make clear that it's not relating to waste uh, collections, the wholly separate matter, um, but relating uh, to waste uh, disposal. disposal. Uh, clearly we do have to have a plan um, in place and we have commissioned um, consultants and physicists uh, to review all relevant data from different sources in the geographic area of Fort Partner Boroughs, uh, such as the existing waste transfer and management sites, the origin, destination, and quantity of each type of waste that is imported and exported, the projected amounts of waste to be generated within the area, and the capacity to manage the amount of waste apportioned um, in the Partner Boroughs in the draft London plan. Um, as I mentioned at the Council last night, we are guided um, by the London Plan, which will hopefully be in effect from the middle um, of next year. Um, clearly, any plan um, that we adopt um, has to act um, in full um, conformity um, with that um, plan. You may ask, what does the South London Waste Plan um, cover? What specific um, planning policy areas um, well, it covers local authority uh, collective waste uh, construction, um, demolition and excavation waste, um, hazardous waste, agricultural waste, clinical waste, radioactive waste, wa and waste uh, water and how that will be um, treated. Uh, the detailed planning policies that set out how applications will be assessed uh, with regards to matters such as sustainable construction, immunity impacts, sustainable energy recovery, and planning obligations, but also as well site safeguarding for waste facilities uh, with relevant issues highlighted for each site if proposals were developed for intensification of the existing um, waste operation and sites to be retired for waste facilities. Uh, now this point is particularly important because um, one of the sites that is rec uh, recommended for uh, cease waste use um, is Benedict Wharf uh, in Mitcham. Um, I think many residents will be pleased that this is proposed to be downgraded. Uh, sewers are looking at locating the planning commission last week from Sutton Council um, for a new waste site and this site as well offers a huge development opportunity and the potential to build um, over 600 um, new homes. Uh, so the designation is something um, we um, actually um, welcome um, as an authority yeah, and obviously we do hope that the Mayor will approve um, the uh, re-designation um, um, of that site and I'm sure it will be um, very welcomed by uh, the residents um, of Mitcham um, who'd have to put up with the lorries and the smell emanating from that site um, for many years. Um, in terms um, of uh, the next steps, uh, summer 2020 um, publication of submission version, um, autumn of 2020 uh, submission then to the Secretary um, of State, it does the Secretary of State um, approval, early 2021 examination in public hearing, and summer 2021 uh, the adoption. Um, and finally, I'd also like to thank uh, the work of the Blumard Plan um, Advisory Committee uh, for actually scrutinising um, this document. Uh, it is quite an extensive document, you've seen obviously Appendix A um, and Appendix B, it runs to many hundreds. Um, of pages, but I'm quite clear that as we move forward, I think there is positives um, in terms of this document, but obviously it's at the consultation, and that consultation will run um, from the um, end of October uh, through um, to uh, December. That's unless we have um, a general election in between. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Welton. I have turned to the lead from this. Chris Lee. Just, just two things to add, Chair, to that conference interruption. One, 
Uh, this went to Borough Planning Advisory Committee and uh, they were entirely content with it. Secondly, the consultation period from the end of October to December is to reflect the fact that this has to go to each of the four borough executive bodies. It's coming here first, uh, so until it's been through the year three years, it won't be available to go into the public domain, but we'll expect that to be by the end of October. Thank you very much. Any cabinet contributions? Dr. Councillor Paul? Um, so I know at 2.5, um, it talks about the number of plans setting uh, borough's targets, um, and one of those targets is having zero biodegradable and recyclable waste to get to landfill by 2026. Um, to what degree do you think the South Melbourne Waste Plan allows us to be on top of that target? Um, I think we're pretty much there now. Um, the only waste we have going to landfill is what's called bottom ash out of the it's the byproduct of the energy from waste that's mm -hmm. operation. So, I'm going to go to the position. Just find that by me again, Chris, because I like it. Bottom ash. These pictures of, of, uh, we see on television of huge swathes of, of land mounted with rubbish everywhere and vultures swooping and a big lorry trying to ram more in. Are we are we are we not sending any of that ourselves? Not at all. And that's the consequence of this waste plan. Yeah. As I say, the only the only element element that goes into a holding yes. ground is that very small proportion that's left over after the end of the energy from yes. waste plants operation. And the only waste that's going into the energy from waste plants yeah, is non-recyclable waste. Yeah. So our food waste, our paper, our card, uh, and our dry mix, plastic tin cans, and so it is going on. Very pleasing. Castle Bites. Just on that note, um, it is recycling week next week, and mm -hmm. the um, Stop on the Waste Partnership has produced a very good video which shows exactly where all of our um, recycling and general refuse goes which will be pushed out by um, their own comms team and our comms team yeah. next week so that that explains where the bottom comes from <laughs> thank you very much so we're on item four uh, good news uh, good towards the consultation with draft south London waste plan uh, we have recognition saying be and a green Thank you very much. We move to our last two items, uh, which the cabinet member may wish to take together. So item six and seven. Item six, financial monitoring June 2019. Item seven, financial monitoring July 2019. And it's now over to Councillor Mark Allison. Yeah, thank you, Nina. And um, I've also heard that I said if that's okay. Um, there's um, a few um, requirements um, in here. Um, as well so as part of the recommendations that we have. But the, um, uh, the main thing um, that, uh, to say is uh, just a big thanks, as always, to everybody um, who um, contributes to, um, to these reports, um, led by um, Caroline and each of the, um, the directors. It's a very important part of the, uh, the discipline of being a business like council that we monitor the financial position month after month after month. Um, because with the constraints um, on us from um, austerity cuts that we've um, had over the um, last nine years now, um, it, is, um, it is ever more important um, to um, stay as close as we can to, um, to the actual um, budget um, in order to avoid um, a position where we have to dip into reserves or cut further um, in order to, um, to maintain services. Um, However, we do recognise that this is also now getting to the point where it is very, very difficult. Services have um, lost um, funding to such an extent that in order to be able to provide the, um, uh, the required level of service, um, it is very testing um, on, um, on the finances. And um, although um, I should highlight um, that it's still quite early in the, um, in the financial year, um, we are um, still relatively close to the uh, budget, I think just 0.2 million um, out at the moment. However, that itself hides um, a number of things that are um, going on at the moment. And um, we should, for instance, um, look at the, um, uh, the expenditure of some of the services and the strain that they're under. Um, 
children's uh, social services and children's schools and families um, is um, looking um, at the opinion to me now um, there is um, there um, already um, in, the, in the year and the strains on that, um, that service due to um, government um, cuts and due to um, an increased demand um, from um, residents is going to be very, very difficult for us over the future years. It's going to be, a, I think, a theme um, that we're going to have to um, be looking at as a council over the next um, few years. Um, also to point out that um, this is the, um, the financial um, monitoring of the this year's budget. We'll see future year's budgets. We're expecting we're going to have to, um, to reduce. We're expecting um, in the next budget round that we're going to have to make uh, very significant further savings. Uh, which will add yet more to, um, to the pressures. And that's because the, um, the, the financial um, budget, uh, the, the, um, the report from the, uh, from the Chancellor um, just was it two weeks ago um, was, um, was not as, um, as generous um, or at all as generous um, as um, it tried to um, portray itself. Um, and it does look as though um, there's going to be very significant uh, council tax increases for um, our residents, um, according to um, what the, uh, the Chancellor um, has laid out, alongside even further cuts to, um, to what we're able to provide. And one of the things that, um, that might have been uh, missed in that statement was that the, uh, uh, the, the trialling um, of, uh, of pooling business rates across London, um, which has benefited um, councils in London um, quite significantly. Um, that's, um, that's now pending and that will cost London millions of pounds um, and, um, and it will have a big um, impact on the, uh, the size of cuts that um, London councils are going to have to make. Um, so once again, thanks to everybody for um, their efforts um, in this. we doing really, really um, good work that uh, we do as politicians understand the very great pressures that your departments are under and um, appreciate the efforts that we've done to this particular project. Thank you. I understand that um, uh, uh, this moment of um, cancellation of um, business rates probably may cost us one and a half million pounds. Uh, <coughs> and that came completely out of the blue from the Tory government. Um, Carol Ackley. Thank you. So, uh, but just to draw your attention to the Month 3 report, um, which went to the Financial Monitoring Task Group. Uh, but because it went there and hadn't been here, um, that was sort of discussed as a confidential item. I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that it's the same information that was um, reported there, and that also includes an update on our income um, recovery and sort of all the detailed savings. So clearly, in the month before report, um, there are some significant um, requirements for the country program. Um, one of the most significant ones is the housing company and sort of linked with some of the work around um, refreshing the plans and the way we to build on those. So we're not in a position to spend um, the money at this stage, so we've split uh, quite a, a large amount into future years. Um, and there's a scheme here for your approval, which will then require council approval, which is a change to what was the um, the filtering scheme to now do the um, urgent reservoir safety schemes as required under um, sort of government act. And whilst so there has been an improvement between month three and month four in the, the monitoring so coming down from 0.7 million to 0.2 million, uh, the deficit schools grant shown on page 106 has actually increased to 9.2 million deficit in a year. So that's clearly something that um, Rachel and her colleagues are working to ensure how we can sustain, um, maintain or uh, contain uh, what we do in this area and also make sure that uh, we still want the DP um, to, to fund this vital area of our service. Um, was that going to create our game about the business rate pooling? Approximately, yes. Thank you. Any, any current contributions? Okay. Um, our last two items. Those are the normal, regular financial monitoring reports of uh, June 2019 and July 2019. On item six is recommendations A and B, they agreed. Thank you. For item seven, it's recommendations A to C, and they agreed. Thank you. That concludes our meeting. Thank you very much.
Mm-hmm.